Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss low hanging fruit or first targets and why as a scalper you need to <clears throat> learn to aim for first targets. So what do I mean by that? So Michael talks about low hanging fruit, that is first targets, and they really should be the bread and butter of your arsenal. Um, I think that one of the mistakes that I have been making in my trading is trying to hold on to things for too long. Um, and Michael talks about this. Listen, every single high or low could be a turning point. It has been a turning point in the past, and Michael says this himself. Um, it could be. It could be again. So, when you're entering in in the market, you've got to aim for your first target. So, let me give you an exa some examples of what that means. Let's say we're here on Thursday's trading, and the market comes down and makes this uh, bullish order block here. So you see this black candle here, you see that it's respecting this BISI, it's probably going to go back higher. You enter in on a stop right there. What is your first target? Yeah, it's that high right there. That's a first target trade. Now, the market looks like it's going to draw up to the next high, then you re-enter the market on another pattern, on another order. Okay, but your first target is that first high. Okay. Let's say that we're here, and again, we are either playing this as a breakaway gap or we're getting one tick above here. What's your first target? That high right there. We hit that. Okay. Now uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue playing the same game here, and I'm just gonna show you more examples of what first targets look like. So again, we trade down here and we see that the closes of the candles are respecting that black candle right there. We trade one tick above that black candle. Stop is down here so we don't get stopped out. We aim for that high. Do we get there? No, but we get to the rejection block. So if you're trailing your stop up, it should still be a profitable trade. Now let's say that we wanted to take a short. The same idea. If you see that price appears to have rejected that rejection block right there, and then price trades below first green candle here and then second green candle, short on a stop right there, what's your target? Very first low right there. You get filled on that. Okay. I'll show some more examples. Let's get into the regular trading hours for Thursday. All right. Say that take a one tick above that black candle there, that's going to be a large order block. We aim for that high. Do we get there? No. You're trailing your stop up though, and if you're trailing your stop up, then that should again be a profitable trade. All right. Now let's talk about situations where you don't have a higher low on your immediate price data. What is a first target if you don't have an immediate higher low uh, to target? Okay, so let's say that uh, we come here, we see the market forms a breakaway gap, and it trades one tick above that order block, all right? And at this point, the market, the order flow is pretty clearly bullish, so you could aim exactly for that high, and that would be reasonable, right? Well, let's say that we want a, a bread and butter target that we don't have price data immediately. What you can do is take a standard deviation projection and aim for the one or aim for the two, preferably the one. <clears throat> Okay, so you get long here, you aim for the one, and that is a 14 point trade. Now, one of the big issues that I've had with my trading, and, and maybe you're the same way, is you want to get, you know, you want to feel good, right? You want to get those big, big runners and, and hit big trades. That's gambling, guys. I mean, that's, that's not the right mindset. Take the bread and butter. Take the 13 points. It's better than no points or trailing, coming all the way back. Every single high or low could reject. Okay, so you really don't know beforehand, and you're trading on a five-minute chart, the market is running. You don't know which one of these highs is going to reject. You just don't. So, again, let's say that we get long on a stop just above this black candle. What's the target? So, 25, 36. Ten-point trade. So you get filled right there, one tick above that candle's high. That would be at 24.50, and you get filled at 36.25, one standard deviation of that black candle. Okay. 
say that we get uh, long again above these three black candles or just above that one. Okay, what's our target? Standard deviation projection of these three black candles. I'm gonna aim for the one. So you're gonna get long one tick above that black candle there and that comes in at 50, 55 evens. You're aiming for the one. That's 73 halves, okay? Again, another profitable trade. All the way to the very end of Thursday. The process remains the same. We're trying to get long uh, when the market is trading higher. We get long right above that black candle or we get long in the uh, inverted fair value gap here. So at the market or on a stop. What is the target? We're going to take that black candle right there. We're going to aim for one. Uh, 15,699.25. So you're filled in one tick above that black candle or you're filled in at the market down here. So you are filled at 85 quarters and your profit target easily hit guys at 99 uh, quarters. Okay. And you can just do this all day long guys. I mean really aiming for one standard deviation, aiming for the nearest high and low you don't want to struggle to hit. This is something that I've had to learn, guys. You don't want price to struggle to fill you on your profit targets. You actually want to see them get filled. And so if you're sitting there going, well, I made one standard deviation, but the market moved up four, who cares? You made money. There will always be another entry, many of them. <clears throat> okay. Um, we could continue to trail the market up all the way to the top, but let's see if we get any bearish examples. All right. So big black candle here or that order block right there so wick inefficiency right there see the price is respecting 50 percent of that candles wick so you have a couple different entry mechanisms one you could just enter at the market or two right below that green candle right there what's the target right there okay so one tick below the low of that is going to be 7 12 25 that low comes in at 60 6, 93, 50. So, what would that trade look like? An 18.75 trade. Okay. Um, any of these, any of these, you could enter short, aim for that target. Okay. Back to the long side. Market makes a new low. You're flat. You don't really know what the market. You know, you can see that the market appears to have respected that busy right there. Okay. But you don't know if it's going to respect it beforehand, so that's why you have to wait. Um, I would say you could get long one tick above this black candle or above these two. Let's say we aim right there, these two. Guys, what's the nearest high? All right. You could aim right there at 706 or right there. Okay. The very nearest high is right there, but if price is, if price is making a big reverse like this, it is probably going up there. So get aim, we fill in right there, 16.75 points. Okay. Easy peasy. black candle right there. It's going to be a bullish order block. Let's take a standard deviation projection. Where are we aiming? We're aiming for the one. So we get filled right there. We get covered right there. So what is that? That is a seven point or six and a half point trade. As you can make a living on that. I know it's an ASDAQ. I understand that. It's only like 120 bucks, but take it. Why not? Aim for the one. Aim for the one. Okay, aim for the nearest highs or aim for one standard deviation. Low hanging fruit. High probability trading. So you're trying to just bank up points, guys. That's basically it. Now, let's say that instead of aiming for the nearest high or low or a one standard deviation projection, like a measured move, what is if you're aiming for an inefficiency, right? So let's say we had a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. So we know that this price action right here is probably going to get delivered back to the sell side. So if you're aiming for an inefficiency, the nearest one, instead of a liquidity target, meaning a low or a high, or a standard deviation projection, let's say that we're short right there. Stop is up here. We don't aim for the full redelivery of that BISI, even if it doesn't. We aim for that. So the low of that candle. So we're filled in short here. 
We make 17 and a three quarters points as the market comes to the top side of that BISI. We're not aiming for a full redelivery. We're aiming for just it to get to the low and just trade into it because we want our profit targets to be filled. I hope that makes sense, guys. Like, you got to get out of the mindset, and I have to get out of the mindset of I want a big, I want a big trade. No, you don't. You want bread and butter. You want steak. You want your profit target to be filled as often as possible. Okay, what's the next trade? Big black candle there. Couple different options that you can use that with. Number one, you see that price. Okay. No, doesn't want to. All right. See the price is respecting the fifty percent of it traded down into a discount, but the close is respected the fifty percent. What's your nearest target? Yeah, you could aim right there. That's that would be fine, but it's right there, guys. It's o two hundred, bang, and you're filled. Okay. One or you can use a standard deviation projection and aim for the one. Look at that. That also hit the one. Okay, so we get filled right here. You get filled right there above that order block. Measured move higher, 733. It's 15 points. Or you get filled down here and you aim for the 0200 high, and that's a, a bit a bit uh, more points. All right, on the way back down, we're waiting to see what the market is telling us. Market trades into these volume imbalances appears to be rejecting. That candle right there, you see it trades below, or these two candles. Where are you aiming? Right there. Right there. Yeah, does the market go further? Yeah. You don't know it's going to go further beforehand, but you have a very good idea it's probably at least drawing down to that low. So we get filled right there, 19 points. I could show you time and time and time again how any session, any amount of volatility, low volatility or high volatility, what are your There you go, guys. There's your low-hanging fruit. Three low-hanging fruit. The nearest high or low, that's your nearest liquidity target. Top side of an inefficiency, so if you're aiming for a BISI, the top side of it. Or one standard deviation. Okay. Any of those are your lowest hanging fruit targets. You're trying to get your profit targets actually filled without too much fuss from price, without too much retracement against you. And that's how you do it, guys. So, for example here, sh short there, what's the target? There's the target. You can even aim for the rejection block instead and get the immediate immediate gratification. Okay, but we're aiming for that nearest low. And, and this process repeats, guys. This process repeats. Short that order block, what is a measured move? Aim for the one. So you get sh short at 39.75. You're covered 12 points lower at 17 evens. This process repeats. Short there, aim for the one. It's what you have to do, guys. If you if you want to have staying power, if you want to scalp for a profession, if you want to day trade frequently and be a high frequency trader, uh, there will be sacrifices that come with that, and one of them is trying to hit big runners. And I have no interest in big runners. I have interest in making income. So what's the easiest income, guys? It's the low-hanging fruit. It's the first target. It's the nearest higher low. It's the nearest inefficiency, and not a full redelivery of that inefficiency, but rather, like, for example, let's say that you, instead of looking at, um, instead of looking at the nearest low, let's say that you were looking at this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Okay. So you're aiming for that inefficiency target, and let's say that you're sitting, you're sitting um, up here. You're short from up here, right? Nearest inefficiency takes you 49 points down, and the top side of it. I'm not aiming. Yeah, did it trade into it? Of course it did, but I'm trying to actually get filled. I'm actually trying to make money, and frankly, you don't, guys. Every time that you let these things go past highs or lows, you could have a reversal on you. 
inefficiencies can reverse price. Highs and lows can reverse price. So these are your low-hanging fruit targets, guys. And if you want to make income over time, you have no choice. That's these are these are your targets. Okay, guys, this has been my discussion on low-hanging fruit or first profit targets and why, as an intraday volatility trader, as a scalper, these need to be your targets. Bye-bye.